R-I-V-E. We're going to have Khalid come up uh, and speak from Pillars of the Community. I don't think this works anymore because they turned off the speakers. Well, that's all right because we're still going to be hurt. <coughs> My name is Khalid, K-H-A-L-I-D. Last name is Alexander. And I'm with Pillars of the Community an organization that's dedicated to advocating for people that are directly impacted by police violence and the criminal justice system. Over the last few days, we've heard a lot of talk about healing. We've heard a lot of talk about building bridges with the police department. We've heard a lot of talk about violence. And we've heard a lot of talk about oppression and how La Mesa has been destroyed by outsiders. Those of us who grew up in this country as black, those of us who grew up in this country as brown, we understand dog whistle politics when we hear it. We understand when you say outsiders came into La Mesa, what you mean is these Negroes and these Mexicans are coming into our neighborhood and they're trying to tell us what to do. It was asked, why was La Mesa with ground zero? Like it was a war zone. It was no goddamn war zone. Come on, Khalid. A bank burn. Yep. The same banks that benefited off houses that were stolen Come on. and houses that were repossessed Come on. by people in La Mesa, by people in San Diego, by people all over this country. And you got people out here with their fake crocodile tears talking about, I'm so sad about my community. What about our community? When you make it clear that there is a distinction between your community and your precious banks and your precious bonds that had some milk stolen from it and our community that's being shot in the street, our community that's being hassled and harassed every single day in your community's trolley stations. This isn't about the young brother behind me. This isn't about the 59-year-old grandmother who got shot in the head by what they call a beanbag. I grew up playing with beanbags. There was no damn beanbag that hit her in the head. There was no damn beanbag that put her in the hospital. There was no damn beanbag that made her put her under a coma so that she didn't have to live with the pain that was inflicted by the people who are supposed to be standing here and protecting our rights to, 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 to demonstrate to protect our rights to protest. And then they want to say, where did the violence come from? Anybody that has been at any of these protests knows exactly where the goddamn violence is becoming from. Anybody that has been any of these protests knows exactly who the provocateurs are. Because they come up wearing armor, they come up holding guns, they come up wearing badges, and they shoot people that have come there to say, we are tired. We are tired being treated as outsiders in the country that we were born in. We are tired of being treated as outsiders in the country that we built, God damn it. And this is our country. This is our, you're not going to tell us, you're not going to tell this young man here that he should sit down and be calm after a police officer shoots his mother in the face. And they the ones that were violent in the street? People out there sweeping. Help. Let's keep La Mesa strong. Let's keep La Mesa not racist. If you want to talk about people coming into what you call your community. She was trying to build bridges. She was in the streets trying to be heard. Every protester that was out there was trying to build bridges. They were saying, listen to me. They weren't chanting, fuck the pigs. They weren't ch chanting, kill white people. They were saying, fucking hands up, don't shoot. Yep. And they shot her. Yep. They were saying, I can't breathe. <laughs> they were saying, I can't breathe. And they choked them. So what kind of dialogue do you want us to have with some people that are going to get up here and they deny that anything happened? And when we ask questions, they want to have dialogue, but they don't want to ask questions, answer any questions. It's under review. <laughs> we reviewed it. It's on, we've been reviewing this. This is nothing new, and we're tired of review. We're ready for action. 
And if you want to have a conversation and you want to have a dialogue with so-called leaders, go have it. But until you admit that racial profiling exists, I don't want to have a conversation with you. Until you admit that one of your officers shot a 59-year-old grandmother in the head, I don't want to have a conversation with you. The responsibility to have a conversation and the responsibility to heal is not on our hands. It's on the hands of the people that are armed to the teeth. It's on the hands of the people that go to trainings of how to kill black men, how to kill Mexican men, how to kill black women, how to kill Mexican women. That's not on our hands. They have something to answer for. We don't. And I'm a Muslim. I believe in justice. I don't believe in crime. I believe in justice. And I know that when the oppressed are oppressed, the blood is on everybody's hand. It's not just the pig's hands. It's not just the police's hands. It's on everybody who waited till this moment, who waited till your goddamn bank was burnt down, the symbol, the real symbol of your country, who waited until the symbol of your country was burnt down to all of a sudden have your little crocodile tears and talk about my community. My community is falling apart. Until they say racial profiling is a reality, how do you negotiate with that? Until you say that you apologize and you're sorry for the wrong that your officers caused and the violence that your police officers caused that get paid with our taxes. How do you negotiate with that? We're not interested in sham negotiations. We want to see action. The mother of these men wants to see action. She wasn't in those streets singing Kumbaya. She was mad because she knows exactly.